Good evening, everyone. I'm Jordan Spivey, joined with my dad, Travis Spivey. And in today's video, we'll be going over the uses and impacts of biotechnology 101. So let's do this. So what is biotechnology? Biotechnology is the use of cellular and biomolecular processes to develop technologies and products intended to help improve our lives and the health of our planet. So basically, we're combining biology and technology together to invent and create products and technologies that are designed to increase our overall health and well-being of our planet. And there are three main types of biotechnology. There is medical, agricultural, and industrial. And we'll dive deeper into these different types of biotechnology as we proceed throughout this video. Let's start off by taking a look at medical biotechnology. And it is the use of living cells and cell materials to research and produce pharmaceutical and diagnostic products that help treat and prevent human diseases. So let's take a look at some of the benefits of it. Approved biotechnology medicines are used to treat or help prevent heart attacks, strokes, multiple sclerosis, leukemia, hepatitis, congestive heart failure, lymphoma, kidney cancer, cystic fibrosis, and many other diseases. And then medical biotechnology is also used in research to find cures and possible treatments to many diseases and ailments that still impact humanity. And thirdly, it is also used for DNA fingerprinting and forensic science and establishing relationships between parents and offsprings. So as you can tell, medical bio biotechnology has been critical and crucial for the sustainability of human life on Earth. Now let's take a closer look at how biotechnology is used in the medical field. And we'll start off by looking at recombinant DNA. And these are molecules of DNA from two different species that are inserted into a host organism to produce new genetic combinations that are of value to science, medicine, agriculture, and industry. So let's take a look at the process of producing recombinant DNA. First, scientists cut open the plasmid using restriction enzymes. So let's take a look at this. So they have this plasmid that they got from this agrobacterium right here. And if you notice, here's the area where they use those restriction enzymes to cut open this section of the plasma. And then they insert DNA containing the gene of interest. So here's this DNA containing the gene of interest and they take this DNA and they place it right here where the plasmid was cut open. And then second, they place the gene containing plasmid back into the bacteria. So if you take a look at this, here's that gene containing plasmid right here. And they've inserted that new gene right here in the plasmid. And then third, they insert the molecules of DNA carrying the new gene into a host organism to produce, produce new genetic combinations that are of value to science, medicine, agricultural, and industry. So here's this is inserted tDNA carrying that new gene. And then they take that new gene and they place it into this plant. And now we have a plant that is going to be produced with this new trait. We've discussed how biotechnology is used in the medical field. Now let's move on to how biotechnology is used in agriculture. Let's take a look at selective breeding, which is a method of breeding that allows only those organisms with desired characteristics to produce the next generation. And we'll take a look at corn as an example. So let's look at this ancient corn from Peru, and this is corn from over 4,000 years ago. Now they made a system or created a system where they chose only the best corn plants to breed together which resulted in better crops over a long period of time and if you notice as they continuously bred the corn together with the best traits notice how the corn became larger and larger until we got to the corn that we have today which is our modern corn that we eat so if we do a comparison look at this corn from peru versus the corn that we eat today and this is a result or direct result from the process of selective breeding Selective breeding is also applied in animals as well, and we'll use dogs as an example. So in order to get a dog with the desired characteristics or traits that are down below or right here, two specific dogs have to be bred together in order to get those desired characteristics in the offspring. So this is how people breed different dogs together and get different offspring or get offspring with specific types of traits that they want or desire or that they're looking for. Selective breeding takes advantage of natural genetic variation. The trait must already exist in the population. 
So let's take an example of selective breeding in cattle. So we have the Brahmin cattle right here. It has good resistance to heat, but poor meat. But then we have the English Shorthorn cattle. It has good beef, but poor heat resistance. But when selecting to breed these two animals, we get a Santa Gertrudis cattle. And the result is we get good beef and it's resistant to heat. So we get the best of both worlds that are combined or genetically combined into one organism with the process or through the process of selective breeding. So far we've discussed the benefits of medical biotechnology and the benefits of agricultural biotechnology, but now let's take a look at the benefits of industrial biotechnology. So industrial or white biotechnology uses enzymes and microorganisms to produce goods for industry in sectors such as chemicals, food and feed, detergents, paper and pulp, textiles and bioenergy such as biofuels. And if you notice, let's take a look at some of these benefits. So first, it increases economic value and profits. It increases job opportunities and also it creates less waste during production. And these are some of the benefits of industrial biotechnology. Now let's discuss the ethics and impacts of biotechnology. So we'll take a look at the benefits first. So first, industrial biotechnology can help generate a new greener economy with new countless jobs. And then biotechnology may solve world food shortage through selective breeding and agriculture and livestock. And then biotechnology helps with discovery of new medicines that are able to treat sicknesses, ailments, and diseases that affect the human population. And then biotechnology is also great with solving crimes using DNA and forensic testing. Now let's discuss the detriments of the use of biotechnology. And there are safety and ethical debates. So first, how far do we go before we draw the line? So as of now, we know that we're using biotechnology to actually help and benefit mankind, but at what point does the overuse of biotechnology actually become a detriment or harm to mankind? And then by creating perfect babies and cloning, what long-term effects or impacts will this have on the human population? And then accidental immunity of pests, weeds, viruses, and bacteria. So the overuse of biotechnology will actually create a larger resistance in these types of organisms and make it even harder and more difficult for us to control or decrease these organism populations. And then biotechnology is actually, and some people actually believe that it's actually decreasing biodiversity on our planet. And if we have decreased biodiversity, this may have an even larger impact on human populations and organisms over our entire planet. And then biotechnology, sad to say, can also be used in biological warfare if it's used in the wrong hands. And then last but not least, there are unknown consequences to biotechnology because this field is relatively new and we don't know what the long-term effects will be over the next hundreds or thousands of years. Now it's time for your check for understanding. And you're going to use your notes and knowledge you have gained from this video to answer the following questions. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Travis Spivey, joined with my son, Jordan Spivey. And if you haven't already, go ahead and like and subscribe to our channel. And also, check out our curriculum and instruction website at www.fathersoninnovations.com. And don't forget to check out our online courses at www.fsicourses.net. And also, go ahead and download our app that's available in the Apple and Google Play stores. And the name of the app is FSI Courses. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you gained a lot of knowledge out of this video. And I hope you enjoyed it. And make sure you have a wonderful, awesome, positive day. Peace.